I'd like to welcome you to this episode of The God Principles. This episode has been a long time coming. If you're a Filipino, a Filipino, have a seat. You're going to learn something. If you're an American or a foreigner considering coming to the Philippines, have a seat. If you have any questions or comments as you're watching the video, put it in the comments. I will be reviewing. This video is about how the passport bros are the prize. My name is Charles Davis, and I want to welcome you to the God Principles, and this is my co-host. My name is William. Hello. Yeah. You guys have been complaining about the noise and everything. We finally got us a quiet setup. You're going to be seeing us coming from my living room in Cebu, Philippines. I want to welcome you to my home, and this is going to be the format for the very new future until we go on the road. The first thing I want to cover is I want to say thank you for giving me your time. And I want you to suspend what you have thought about the Passport Bros and listen to what the Passport Bros really means. Wait, you know that definition? I think that when I looked up, Charles, once again, thanks for inviting me to the God Principles. I appreciate being here. Um, the definition, when I looked up the urban definition of the Passport Bros, movement it really was it was foreign uh, western men that had sought out asian women for dating and marriage purposes it was western men that had sought out asian women for dating and marriage purposes that was the definition of a passport bro yeah william and i have discussed this topic and we see on youtube it's always about what the Filipino brings and wants. But what about what we bring and want? No one ever discusses the other side of that topic. That's what this is gonna be about. The first thing we want to cover is the top salary in the Philippines is $2,980. That is the top salary of your doctor. We come in with income similar to that level. What do you got to say about that, William? It's, it's something that I think that needs to be discussed, Charles, because I, I went to the ophthalmologist while I've been here. I had a cataract surgery done in the U.S., so I had to get a checkup and make sure my eyes were still doing well, which they were, thankfully. And she was an ophthalmologist, trained in school for almost eight years to be a doctor of ophthalmology. That's about what she's making a month. And as, as uh, fate would have it, most of us that they call passport brothers are coming over here with pensions or social security at or above what a doctor of ophthalmology makes here in the Philippines. Not only that, we come with a lot of professional experience that you may not find in the Philippines. A lot of the, your modern developments here, someone from another country had to come here and teach you that. Like in my case, I'm in digital marketing, I'm in IT. I came here with a business and a lifestyle that I brought with me. I did not leave that behind. And I still work in the industry in addition to my retirement income because I'm not retired. I'm not. I did not come here to retire from my lifestyle. That's what I want to get across. I'm living a particular lifestyle. And the Filipino that comes into my life has to fit into my lifestyle. 
What do you think about that? Well, I think it's true, Charles, and, and, and that goes into the question that each one of us that are foreigners, because over here in the Philippines, if you're not a Filipino, you're a foreigner. So it doesn't matter whether you're from France, England, uh, uh, Australia, or USA, you're a foreigner in the Philippines. doesn't matter whether you're black or white, you're a foreigner in the Philippines. Right. So we as foreigners, remember that we, we come over here, even those of us that are not still working online or still in the uh, working community, say that we're uh, 60 or over. And we come over here with, with pensions, some of us large pensions. Some of us were in the military, as myself, I'm a veteran. I was a, a pastor of a church for 10 years. I was a drug and alcohol counselor with a degree in drug and alcohol counseling. Also, uh, there is many skills. I started a men's shelter from the ground up that's still running in the community today that has a men's shelter called Good Samaritan that's active in helping men and women in many cities in the U.S. So we, we brought a lot of experience. We brought a lot of value. And even if you only had Social Security and a pension, you brought, came over here making as much as professional doctors and lawyers in this country. Yep, sure do. But William and I had this discussion. We bring a skill set that we have wondering what was God's purpose for this. We are in the recovery community from America. Now he said he's an AODA counselor. I'm an addiction recovery coach. I have recovery experience. And we believe, at least I believe, that you all don't have the experience to deal with what is coming because in my life, God has never sent me somewhere he didn't have something for me to do. And that's what really comes in my mind right now. I see you all are dealing with meth addiction. Heaven help you with fentanyl hits here. You ain't seen nothing yet. But that, oh, those are skill sets that we bring to your country. Skills that you don't have the experience in. And so along those lines, I have to be concerned with the person that I invite into my life, into my lifestyle. Right. Will they embarrass me? Because I have a personal brand. So I'm on the internet, you can look me up and my family and clients follow me all over the internet. So I have to be very cautious about what I post and what the person that I'm with posts on the internet. I'm cleaning up that mess today. When I got here, like we talk about what we bring to the, to the relationship, you and I talked about the money. How about the technology? The things that they get access to that they normally wouldn't have. It is, that's true Charles. I, I know that I brought, when I came over to meet for the first time the woman that I had been talking to online. I brought a laptop with me. I brought a tablet with me for her, mm -hmm. her daughter. Mm -hmm. um, not only that, we bring experience, especially those of us that are over 50. We're bringing life experiences with us that we, a lot of us had already raised families. We had already been through a lot of things in the U.S., so we were bringing experience it with us. And, and the other thing is that I think that, and I'm sure that we'll be talking a little bit more in depth about this, but you know, if you look on uh, YouTube now about the Philippines, there's a lot of uh, Filipino uh, uh, vloggers, a lot of women, a lot of female, and they're all talking about what they're looking for in a foreigner. And it, it's shocking to me because I think that we need to change our mindset as the foreigners that are coming to the Philippines. Right. We need to start asking the question, because remember, whatever Filipina that we choose to be in a relationship, we're changing her life. Not only with our experience that we bring to the table, but our income. We should be asking the question rather, what are we looking for in a Filipina, not the other way around? Yeah, absolutely. In my field, the profession, we have what is called a vetting process. Before I work with the client, I have a list of questions to make sure 
that the relationship, the business relationship we're about to enter into, in, enter into is beneficial to us both because it is about the relationship. As an example, TikTok, very popular. There was a situation where a daughter was playing dress up in her mother's negligees and clothes. And they took a picture, just harmless, harmless. However, they took the picture and posted it on Facebook. Realize in America, posting your children on Facebook in provocative stuff, even though it was playful, is frowned upon. Mm -hmm. It is frowned upon. And I actually got contacted from a person in my network of my personal friends talking about that particular picture. What I didn't know was they had contacted the person that posted that picture and that person used the B word on her in a private conversation, which is disrespectful and it was embarrassing. I just cleaned that up. I had to personally talk to that person on Facebook to explain to them where things were going. Because I run into that situation another time. I'm in the tech community, right? As an outing, I was going to a Notion meetup for the Philippines uh, group at the Drip Draft. I took my ex-girlfriend with me and she felt out of place. And I, I didn't understand what was going on. Uh, I'm in there associating on a professional level. That's why I say it's real important. Do I figure out, are you gonna be able to make the adjustment coming into my life? Because my life is not gonna stop just because I came here. Tell me about what you, your work. Well, I, well, I think it is important to remember. Now, now, now remember with the backdrop of this, guys. In the United States, I'm 67 years old. In the United States, we were put into a certain mold once you get past 62, 63, that you almost become invisible yeah. in the dating scene. Um, there's a lot of eligible young men that are making lots of money in the United States. There, there, there are many of them to uh, go around. There's a lot to choose from. Uh, I even watched when they were having speed dating and, and things like this. Women would sit at the table. Uh, they used to have these in Atlanta. And men would come and sit at the table and they would vie for the right to even talk to that woman. Um, and guys that would come to that table, there wouldn't even be guys 62 and over. They weren't even invited to those events. Nobody was looking for anybody like that. So remember, guys that are 62 and over and up uh, started coming and, and looking online to date Asian women and Philippine no women they were coming over here with the mentality that if some beautiful girl that's half his age is talking to him uh, uh, via a uh, messenger or uh, social media then he comes to meet her he's lucky but I'm saying that's the mindset that we have to lose because remember they have millions and millions of single Filipino women here that are vying for the right to date you. And this is the mentality that we have to remember to come here with, not that they're the prize, but you're the prize. Because there's millions of them, but there's not millions of you or I. So we have to understand the mindset when we get off the plane, you're in demand. You're bringing in a salary that you have a salary of professionals, even if you're coming over here retired, making $1,800 or up, you are in demand. You're bringing that person you get into a relationship to a whole new level of income. Some of them come out of family life where some of them, the most that they've ever seen, maybe $200, $300 a month. And here you come with $3,000 a month. Remember, you have to choose the person that you're choosing wisely because they're coming to a different table to sit down that you're bringing them to. Yep, yep. See, William brought up a, a good point, something we've learned from our recovery experience, that some men come in with low self-esteem, 
low self-worth, all because of how they've been treated in their other environments. Yes. And we have to recover from that. I've worked on mine, Williams worked on his. Yes, yes. And if you're a man coming here to the Philippines, there's gonna be some links in the description. You can contact us and schedule a call with us to discuss you coming here. It's a good idea to have some boots on the ground like myself, like William, and we have a whole little network here that can connect you for resources like where you can stay, yes. Airbnb, some way that you can get some direction. And if it's just no more than just to come here for a vacation, yes. along the other lines, um, we are the prize, but also they look at how are we going to provide for their future. Yes. The flip side of that is how are you gonna provide for mine? Because I've seen some situations where they were married to a woman and you expect the man to go first and the woman went first. And they had kids and didn't have no insurance for her. We're gonna come in, get insurance on the children, insurance on our fiance, and they're gonna you're gonna get access on a medical level. We're gonna upgrade their school education. They're gonna get access to things that they may not normally get access to. Yeah. And that really leads to what William and I's experience talks about. And that's, that's the other thing, Charles, is that remember, you have to remember coming over here as a foreigner. It's a whole different set of rules for you here in the Philippines. Remember, and as Charles was saying, a lot of times guys will go and get insurance for the, the, the uh, woman and her child if they have children, and, and they'll forget about themselves. Remember, you as the prize, you as the one that have brought them to a whole new level of living, make sure you cover yourself with your, get insurance for yourself. Make sure you do some things for yourself, because remember, if something happens to you, they have nothing. They go back to a province or something without what they had. So you have to take care of yourself first. By taking care of yourself first, it's not uh, uh, selfish, guys. By taking care of yourself here, you are helping that woman that you've chosen. Because as long as she got you, she stays at that higher table. Yep, yep. You have to excuse us. I'm right outside uh, my townhouse, the street there, they probably blocked off. Well, let's continue um, our discussion. And here's a topic one of the other YouTubers brought up. I want to talk about being an Afro-American. You all use the terms black, and there's African-Americans, and then there's the N-word. Realize, for some of us, the N-word and black does not apply. We don't look at ourselves with either of those terms. This is one of the things that we want to bring up to the Philippine community is that when you let them tell you who you are, you will lose who you are. And you're not going to like their definition. You're just not. I know who I am. I know my ancestry. I can trash mine back to the very first one of my family that set foot on the shores of America and Virginia. And I'm gonna cover that later. But using that N-word, that offends some people. You do that in America, you be getting your face slapped. In the wrong place, that's you, you be picking yourself up right. the floor. Cause see, William and I understand that that N-word, there was a young man, his name was Emmett Till. He was a young man from Chicago, my hometown. He went down south to visit and he said the wrong thing to a white woman and they lynched him. So you have to understand that that N-word has some hurtful connotations that go with it. And you use that term and I'm associating with you, I'm fixing to disassociate with you because you're not disrespecting me like and, that. And the thing is that my brother-in-law of my wife, 
he had a conversation with me and so I came to understand a little more about the Filipino Filipinos thinking of the N-word. And actually, it's unlike most times in the US where they're saying it with intent to de degrade you. Mm -hmm. Here in the Philippines, it's a little different. If you're called that, they think that they're endearing themselves to you because all they know about American uh, uh, blacks, so to speak, is what they've seen on videos. And what do we see on the videos and the rap videos? Yep. All they call each other is, yep. is, is the N-word. So they think it's okay for them because we call each other that. And I had to explain to him that all of us are not in there and all of us are not like what you saw on TV in rap videos that that's a derogatory word to most of us but even so some he said well but you guys call each other that i said yeah but what they didn't show you in the videos if somebody outside that circle calls you that they're fighting yeah they or getting shot i said they didn't show you that so it's not uh, a word that we take lightly we don't like that word and i went on to tell him why and once he told me that he asked me that question a lot of times you may get called that over here and they think they're being uh, uh, not offensive. You have to almost explain it to them. Right. That was our intent of educating you because a lot of your knowledge and information about America comes from social media and it's some of the wrong impression yeah. about reality. It's not the truth at all. Uh, the, the drug problem the homeless problem, things that you may not have interest in because we're from that country and we have relatives still there. I still keep abreast of what's sure. going on there. You know, it's like the Chinese are sneaking in through Mexico, mm -hmm. going into the United States, the Chinese from China. I say, well, wait a minute, what's going on here? They've opened the borders to everybody. And they re what they're doing is they're replenishing the population of America to fuel the capitalistic system. And it's not gonna be good because it's a bad sign all around. So now, you're about, about done. You got anything else you wanna cover? I, I just wanted to get across, I know that when we discussed making this video, I thought it was very important for those that are coming over. Those of us that are here, foreigners, We've been here over a year. We've been uh, uh, through the learning process of what the do's and don'ts uh, when you first come to the Philippines. And remember, uh, a lot of guys are getting scammed, so to speak. I can tell you wow. stories. I, I know a guy that sent, he talked to a woman for a year through the pandemic, two years. And then he started sending all his money over here to build a house. And he sent millions of pesos over here. And when he came to the airport to meet the girl that he had been talking to for two years, she ghosted him. He never saw her. All his money was tied up in a house that he never saw. He got off the plane. They had the, the mayor of the, uh, the Mackin had to help this guy get a plane ticket back home, back home. And they're gonna look into the situation, but he lost all that money he sent. Guys, remember, you're the prize not the woman. There's millions of beautiful women here that are vying for your attention. They're not the prize. You are. Remember that, guys, that are coming here. On the flip side of that, I just saw a story just a couple of days ago on one of the YouTubers' channels. And I think the Philippine community should start to stand up for what's right and wrong. This man had, was married to a Filipina for seven years. He ended up having to leave her because the money kept disappearing. He looked up one day and one, the, his motorcycle payment was yeah, not being paid. Story. You saw that, saw didn't you? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot and, of stories like that, guys. Yeah, yeah. And so the guy was interviewing her and it's like she had control of the money and she was paying the bills. And I say, well, why didn't she pay for his motorcycle? Where did the money go? Remember, guys, most of the women that you're coming over here, if you got a girl that's coming from the province, and most of the guys, oh, I want a province girl. These girls have never handled that much money in their life ever. They've, you get more in one social security check than they've ever seen at one time in their life. 
why would you then hand her that money to manage? She, she doesn't know how to manage $10, let alone thousands of dollars. Yeah. You're the prize, guys. Keep your wits about you. And don't leave your manhood in the United States. Bring it with you. Yes. Yes. But also, in that interview, people need to realize that video content has changed the world we live in. Yes. The things we do now, people will post it on social media. You may not like that. But that's the way the world has gone because there's too many people preying on other people. Yes. And because no one is saying, watch out for this person, they keep getting new victims. Yes. So when you see something about somebody's bad behavior on social media, it's a warning for those that may have run into the, I saw a video where the daughter talked about her mother was dating a guy came up with HIV and when they posted it on social media, a hundred people showed up that had slept with that man. Wow. Yes. So there's a lot of things going on that the world are changing. We wanted to make you aware of it. This this topic, this video, William and I have been chewing their fat about this one for quite a while. It was a long time coming. And William, we're coming to an end. And I asked you a question. Yes. What is your why? As a brand strategist, as a personal brand, you have to have some sort of power behind you, a reason for doing what you're doing. Something that's gonna drive you. I'm gonna let you go first. My why was that I, I'm, I'm, I was a pastor for 10 years. And so I knew, I, and I love sports. I played sports, baseball, football, basketball, uh, pretty good at one time. And I understood that just like in a sporting event, in life, there's four quarters to your life. And for me, I knew that I was in the fourth quarter. This is the fourth quarter of my life. I'm 67. I am playing in the fourth quarter. I got to leave it all on the field. So I was coming to the Philippines almost like my last adventure, almost like the Indiana Jones movie. When they, my grandson said, what are you going to look for, a, a, a pop? I said, a fortune in glory, kid. A fortune in glory. That was the line in the movie in Indiana Jones. <laughs> it was my last great adventure. I was coming here not only to meet the woman of my uh, 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 dreams, so to speak, but also that fortune in glory. My last great adventure. That's what I was looking for. I want to do something more than just drift away in the United States invisible. So I was looking for really my last adventure. That's a good one. I'm going to answer that question for you. I have a story. There was a man, he came into the United States in 1816 as a slave. He was on a plantation in Virginia. The master's house caught a fire. He went into the house and saved the master's wife. The master was so grateful, he set this man free. That man then left, went off and worked, and came back and bought his wife and children out of slavery. That man was my great, great grandfather. Unbelievable. His name was Elijah. That's legacy. Yes, it is. That's legacy. Yes, it is. See, my children, I have one son. I have 11 grandchildren. They've watched me. They see my story. The best thing I can give them as a man is that story, my story. That's right. I can't give them nothing more powerful than that. Because that story of Elijah, we make sure our children know that. Know where you come from. Yes. Know that there's a God in this world. When you turn to the God, because they call it the God principles for a reason. I've been living this for 18 years. They saw me get down. Then they're going to see God raise me up. Yes. I'm going to leave them that legacy. Don't get in my way. 
Because God is going to see the beat through because I didn't go too far to turn back now. That's right. And I want you to know that. It's hard. It's hard to know where you're going if you don't know where you came from. Absolutely true, guys. Know where you came from. Then you'll have a good bar barometer on where you're going. I want to thank you all for watching. That's something that's been on my heart for a while, William and I. We look at why did God bring us here to the Philippines at this time? For us to run into each other at this stage in our life. And we know that there's a purpose to it. And we're just trying to live it. I'm going to thank you for your time. I'm going to ask that you click like, and click share, and subscribe. Because the goal is to reach a million people with this message. Because in the field of recovery, we carry a message. The message is courage, love, and hope. Hopefully, I've done my job.